Hey everyone, you're listening to an episode of The Artist Corner featuring our Artist of the Month, Mark, who is known online as Dorg Mall Snow. Mark started out his career in illustration and graphic design, and eventually he got into 1-6 scale collecting, but he got tired of waiting for new action figures, so he started designing his own. He currently produces two concept lines, 13 Project, and The Blind Prophet Saga. The links to his website and social media are in the show notes below. We hope you enjoy this show available on YouTube and YouTube podcast. All right, here we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Artists of the Month. We have Stoli and me, Jensen, here with you guys. And we also have Mark, who is at, the handle is dorkmall underscore snow. And he has got some amazing stuff. So first of all, Mark, start off by just telling us what you're about. What is your specialty? Hello. Well, oh God, how can I sum that up? I, I'm, I make dollies. <laughs> Simple as that. People like to call them posable action figures, but they are dollies. Yeah, I make action figures. Uh, I've been into it for quite a number of years. And now that is my job. That's what I do for a living. That's it's insane. insane. <laughs> but it's fantastic. It's a dream um, life. <laughs> it, honestly, it is. I mean, sometimes I sit in my little workshop here and I'm just like, wow, this is, how is this possible? But yeah, so I make one six scale action figures and they're all based around my own sort of designs around a story called The 13 Project and that is a sort of sci-fi post-apocalyptic sort of story that I've been working on for many years and they're all characters from that it's a huge thing it's massive that's awesome so yeah so that's that that's that's what I do that's awesome what's your typical typical run size when you do like, like when you started this thing you started off with characters and the great thing about having a post-apocalyptic you know whatever you kind of want to do sci-fi is that you can create and build characters based on whatever you're thinking of yeah yeah i mean that that's the beauty of it your creative license you can just do whatever you like so a typical run it started it, well, it started out at 13 with the, the, the first sort of figure that I made, and it, it was insane. It, it was absolutely insane. Obviously, I'd posted pictures on social media beforehand, and I just said, yeah, they're going up, they're going up at this time, and within four minutes, they'd gone. And I was like, what? Uh, I should have made more! <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing! <laughs> But back then, I suppose when I was doing that, I was I was doing a lot more what we call kit bashing. So finding parts, um, buying parts, and build scratch building stuff and putting them all together to make these characters. Whereas now it's completely different. I mean, the last figure that I made is, you know, yeah, I had to buy boots because I can't. I just can't make boots. I just can't. <laughs> so, but everything else, you know, the clothes, I really, really, particularly with the one I'm releasing soon, I'm really working hard on my 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 nemesis, which is which is head painting. Yeah, I mean, as you know, it is very very hard, and you know, there's some folks out there that are just expert phenomenal. You're like, oh, that's not possible. How can they do that? <laughs> you yeah. practice and mess up. <laughs> so it's it's amazing what there's there's so many people out there that are stunning at what they do. Yeah. So the, the the sort of runs they they started out at thirteen, and sometimes I do double runs if I'm lucky. Which for a number of years now I've been very lucky, and on the odd occasion I I get to do triple runs. It's it's insane. It is, it is, and it blows my mind, it really does, and I'm so grateful <laughs> for the community that's out there that, that actually sort of like my stuff and buy it, it's amazing, that's it's fantastic. So awesome, so tell me a little bit about your creative process, it sounds like you've really given yourself the freedom to make what you want, right, based on this storyline that you've got going, but what is your creative process when you're designing and building, you know, these these custom figures? Well, it, it's... Obviously, I've got a, there's a story in my head and quite a large amount on paper. Uh, and it either comes from writing, the process of writing something 
or it comes normally from a head sculpt. That's it. I see a head and I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's, I, that's, I, it just needs a little bit of work. It just needs a little tweaking. And it, I know, I know that this thing is going to have a life, a character, you know, just emotions, feelings, and you can create so much and push so much across without saying anything. Yeah. I found, I did find that so many, I'm not bashing, I'm, don't get me here, I'm not bashing hot toys at all. I'm not bashing hot toys. They do some phenomenal stuff. But I found that a lot of the work, it was lifeless. Yes. You know, the faces were just deadpan. And, you know, like, mm. So f for me, that it was all about seeing that head sculpt and then it just goes from there. And like these days, it is, it is literally, I get to just, Think, oh god wouldn't it be cool i love samurai wouldn't it be cool to yeah. do like samurai armor yeah. based on on a figure and in the story there was a there there's a a particular group if you like known as the kefler and they their armor is samurai based and years ago i used to do commissions mm -hmm. so before i did this i was doing commissions and people, you know, I'd speak to people. I'd say, oh, look, I'm going to do this. What do you, do you think? And they would, they would have a little bit of input. I would have a bit of input. And I was doing commissions. But it, it got a bit silly because I had like 60 commissions. Oh. And were, they weren't going to get their figures for years, you yeah. know. So, uh, I ha and it's not a particularly lucrative just doing one-offs. Mm. So some of the stuff that I did on commissions, particularly like that Kefla one, that was inspired by one of my very old figures. Mm. Wow. So yeah, and I just so I knew I knew exactly what I wanted, and you know I'm sure we'll put up some pictures while we're doing yeah. this to yeah. show that you know what I mean. So yeah, so that's that's where it all starts, and then it is just that painstaking process of prototyping. I bet. You know, in your head. I mean, I know you've got you guys have done oh, things. Man. Yeah, <laughs> you know what it's like. Like yeah, I don't. You're all together, anything. and you're like, oh, take it all apart. No, I really don't know what I want anymore. And you do something and you go, oh, that looks great. And then the next day you go, what oh. is that I've made? That's awful. <laughs> it's missing. So it, it's, yeah, totally. Yeah. So it's, yeah, the creative process is a, is a long and drawn out yeah. thing. Or it's something that happens like that, you know. It totally depends. Depends on what you have right in front of you. And yeah, you see something on the internet and you're like, oh. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and that's the, that's the beauty of social media. Yeah is there's such a rich resources out there I for, for so creative. Yeah. Yeah. And and it is. It's it's it, we're very lucky to have it mm -hmm. and sort of use it like that. So yeah, so that's the creative process and then it, it goes into the prototyping, which is, you know, just constantly making stuff and, you know, sewing stuff and yeah. like the, this 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 one, which is the sort of one that came out. Yeah, the trousers. Awesome. You know, they are 100% inspired by a pair of trousers I've got. I've got a really nice, this colour, big, they're baggy. And I was like, I need to make these. I need to make these. <laughs> and they, and I, I hate sewing. Yeah. yeah I, and I'm not very good. I, I couldn't do it. Um, right. Gosh. But I was like, this is it. I've got to do it. I've got to, I've got to make a pair of, of slacks for this lady. So I did. I just sat and I cut out. I drew up templates. So I drew the templates on the computer. Yeah. And then I've got this machine. It's, it's called a cry cut. And it's, I think people use it for like decoupage and yep. stuff. They're cutting yeah. paper. Yeah. Fantastic things. But I was like, I wonder if this could cut fabric. Oh, it, and it does. So, yeah. Oh, wow. And so if you imagine cutting something out with a pair of scissors that's like that small. Yeah. It's so hard. So hard. It's just so hard but on this machine it just cuts it out and you're like oh yeah that's easy that's Very easy bad. really easy and then suddenly you've got like 20 of them and you're like <laughs> so, yeah, so there's a lot of machines involved that have just saved a lot of time yeah a lot of time. so on that so, on that topic, yeah sorry you're, no you're good that was kind of my next question yeah. you know what are some of your favorite tools like your cricket or materials that you work with when you create these figures so i say the, the, oh god what's the most obviously i have to say the 3d printer mm. simply because i mean i used to scratch build a lot of stuff yeah with molds and yeah 
I mean, and yeah, and do oh, I so much casting? Oh god, mold making and casting. Oh. Yeah, no, no, those days I, I try not to. And it, it and scratch building is great, but when you're coming down to sort of making like let's say, okay, so I made a gas mask year years ago. This one, yeah, on a figure, and I was like, I love this gas mask. Yeah, I love. It. You know, I need to make it again. And I was like, I don't even know what the parts came from, right. you know, where. So yeah. I was like, right. So now I can just draw them up. And and that's, yeah. that's the, the actual, the sort of bit that goes over the face yeah. is cast and the bit at the front is cast. But the little tiny details, yeah. they're just printed. And I'm just like, oh. So the 3D printer, obviously, and then I use the software that I use. Uh -huh is a, a software called Tinkercad, which is open resource. It's really basic. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's kid level stuff. I think we use it a lot. People use it in schools. The resolution isn't really high on it, mm -hmm. but when you're doing one six scale, you don't need a massive resolution. Right. Correct, yeah. So, and it's, and it's free and I, I can get my head around it. <laughs> Whereas some of the other three D software, I'm just like, oh, it's, it's I try to mind them in. Yeah. yeah, but my brain, my brain is not. It's it can't do that anymore. I used to learn software when I was, you know, back in the day when I was teaching and stuff. I could learn software, and my brain would absorb it. But now I'm just like, oh, You're so old. <laughs> I'm so yeah, I'm so old. I can't do this. I can't do it. So, so yeah, so I, I got a bit lazy and not pushed myself to learn any other 3D software. I do a little bit of Fusion 360, which is a really good bit of kit. But again, it's such a massive program and my brain is just, there's not much room left. There's so much room for specialty people in business now. Like you need one guy to do specialize only on this, one guy to special only. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if, 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 if there's a team of you, it, it's just so different. Yeah, totally different. I mean, I've worked with a few people in the past, and but now I, I've got a guy, Roberto. His name is. He's a lovely man, and he's a sculptor, mm -hmm. a fruit sculptor. And he's starting out. He's young, and he's just he's fantastic. He's absolutely fantastic. And so he's done a couple of heads for me, just you know, just playing around. And because obviously my goal is to is to just not not rely on buying a head and, and modifying it and casting or anything like that or trying to buy multiple heads but to actually you know have a hundred percent whole custom so yes yeah, so the, the printer the cricket obviously what else is just well probably now my airbrush i used to hate airbrushes I hate them <laughs> i'm a messy man i'm a messy man when i come to work i'm a messy man but i know where yeah. everything is <laughs> yeah. I, oh, yeah. I know where everything is <laughs> on my. Thumbnail. I mean, my desk is massive. I'll take you for a tour of my little room, but my desk is massive. Yeah. How many times am I working on my lap? <laughs> All the time. Oh, this is a whole thing. It's just cluttered. Sounds and, like it sounds yeah. like his desk. And it sounds like me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, you end up. I mean, you start. You start when you start out doing something creative. When you when you're young, you always start with your lap. Yeah. And that, that's where you always end up, is close to you. Yep. So, uh, so, yeah, so airbrush, I hate airbrushes that I, that I really do because like cleaning them is just like, oh, really? And then it clogs up, and you're like, oh, man. <laughs> and you can spend so much money on an airbrush, like three, four hundred pounds on an airbrush. So, I, I don't, I don't, I, I get the cheapest airbrushes I can possibly find. Throw them away. <laughs> and yeah, I tell you, I do, I'm dreadful. You know, when it really because they're cheap, they're not going to last. Right. When they start playing up, that's it. It's it's time to go. I mean, you know, I'll spend like fifteen quid on on an airbrush, and well, the the the, the heads that I've just made a breakthrough, if you like, on actually doing heads. To think that it's been done with the cheapest airbrush you can possibly get <laughs> is it's, it's not bad. It's all right. I think it so, says a lot about you. Yeah, that says a lot yeah. about you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a lucky kid. <laughs> yeah, I'm really lucky. <laughs> <Jam it. laughs> so, but but yeah, and I think also that although, like I said, with the 3D programs, I do struggle with the 3D programs. But other stuff, I think the the process of learning is just it's lovely, you know. So 
like learning at my age of 50 odd, learning to paint heads a bit better, pushing myself to do that, learning airbrushes a bit more, yeah, it makes a, makes a big difference. Every so run will get better and better. As yeah, that, that, that is, that is my, that was my ultimate goal. Yeah. You know, I knew, I knew that the first figure that I made has got to be, has got to be good. But I, I, you know, every figure I make, I like, right, what can I do to just push this figure just that little bit further? Yeah. Every single time, it's just one thing, you know. So, like, the, the one I'm doing now, it's, it's, for me, it's the heads. The heads is the thing. The one before that is, is the clothes. The one before that, which was the kettle with the armour, was the fact that it was all 3D printed armour. Wow. You know, the whole lot. Everything, even the sword. Yeah. It's not but so yeah, so it's just pushing that envelope all the time. I love so it. yeah. Well, awesome. yeah. My next question for you, I'd love to know of, of a particularly challenging or difficult, you know, creation that you were working on, and then how you overcame whatever was really difficult. God, what was the time? <laughs> Every <laughs> run is difficult. All, all of them probably have their own little things that are difficult, Every, right? Yeah, they do. They do. I mean, there was one. Well, obviously, the first the first time I ever really got into sort of adding hair. Yeah. God, I love some of that. But adding hair to it like like a figure. Yeah. That was that was like a particular challenge because I was like, <sighs> and now now when you look at what people do now, you're like, man, they're so good. Yeah. They're so good. But that was that was the, the so they it was a male figure that I made was the first sort of one that I really added hair to. And, you know, I look at it now and I'm like, oh man, I could do, I, I, he needs a haircut and we need to start again. Yeah. Um, but at the time, you know, it was, it was a, it was a learning process. And I learned so much. And now, you know, when I do the hair now, I feel a lot more comfortable doing it until I look on social media and see that's oh, some, what some people are doing. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. why did they die there? And it, oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> so compared to other people. <laughs> Yeah, I know that's that's the heart, and we all do it. Yes. You know, we all do it. But yeah, so and the one I did with dreadlocks, mm. that was a real challenge. Wow. Yeah. That was a massive challenge because she was quite popular, and, and you have to roll every single. And uh, yeah, it's ruined my hand. That figure ruined my hand without a doubt. I've got pain. The pain in my in my thumb here oh. is, I believe, from, from the rolling <laughs> dreadlocks. <laughs> I'm not doing them again. No, no. <laughs> People could be bald, you know, no more dreadlocks. Yeah. But yeah, so, but the other other challenges were definitely, if we sort of go backwards from the head painting, the, the armour, the Kefla armour, getting it thin enough and structurally sound. Because obviously I'm printing in a resin, which is it's quite good, tough resin, yep. but it, it it can warp. Yes, yeah, over time it can, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know when probably when you get prototypes made and stuff, you're like, yeah, this is really good. And like, you look at it again, you think, hang on, that's bent. Why is that? Why is that all twisted out? Hmm. Yep. You know, so that obviously now when I design stuff, I have to be so 100% confident that that is not going to buckle and twist over time. So like the, for instance, the sword on, 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 on the Kepler, that's got a tiny rod running all the way through it yeah. a tiny piece okay. of wire so that if it does bend or warp you can sort of like e -t tweak it back okay. but, but yeah so that was that was a good challenge before that there was the i years ago i made this sort of, sort of exo suit type thing inspired again by a, a friend on, on, a, on a forum i think it was and he made it out of bionicle Lego parts. And I was like, wow, these are great. <laughs> really cool, really cool. And, and obviously the Aliens Power Loader is always in the back of your mind. Oh, of course, it's yeah. an iconic piece of kit. So I was, I was, I, I'm going to, I need to make, I need to make this. And I need to make it so it, it, it gives a nod to Lego um, and the Bionicles, but I, I also needs to not look like Lego. So, so... Yeah, so this, this was, this oh, was an insane, wow. it was a massive challenge. Wow. Uh, you know, because everything, I wanted everything to be sort of with the magnets and everything had to be posable. And then I found that uh, after printing it, I made it and I was like, wow, and, and I managed to get it together without breaking. Right. 
And so I started, I started, you know, started building a few and then I picked one up and it had gone floppy. Like all the joints had slightly expanded. I was like, no, no. So it's again, it's right back to the drawing board. You have to go right back to basics and think, right, how can I overcome this? Mm -hmm. yeah. so, and the only way I could do it was was by adding. So this is a wire. So this is this is housing, you know, from electrical wire. Right. It's quite stiff, copper core, and it's it's just enough to bend and just enough to hold it all in place. So yeah, so that was like, whoa, that was a good one. That was a tough one. But like you said, they all they all have their own challenges. But I, I, I would imagine the biggest challenge of all is just, are you doing the right thing? Yeah. You know, as a creative, you, you, you make something and you might think it's really awesome, but if no one buys it, yeah. you can't move on. You can't move to your next project. project. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's really hard. Really. That side of it's really difficult. That's, that is the most challenging bit. I bet. Um, Believing in yourself. <laughs> not, and not giving up, yeah. And not giving up, no, yeah. no. So one, you can't. that kind of, so I have a question. So so your first 13 yep. on your first run you ever did, and you're doing these things from beginning to end, your first 13, yep. do you see the same customers in each run that you do? I have got, I have got some customers that got everything I've ever made. Everything you ever made, wow. Yeah, yeah, there's, I think there's, I think there's two. I think there's two that have got everything I've ever made. Wow. I've got a lot of what I call repeat offenders. Yeah. You know, they're, they're coming back. They come, They don't tell their wives, but they come back. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't like, no. I mean, there was some that I used to have to send to their work addresses. Yeah. Because they don't, I mean, it's a lot of my stuff's not cheap. No. You know, it's, you know, but yeah, you'd have to send it to their work addresses uh, because they didn't want their wives finding out. <laughs> we currently do that for, for, for customers that they'll say, send, send this to a PO box or send it to my neighbor. I've got one. I'm not telling you yeah. how it is. <laughs> Otherwise, that's it. It'd be a divorce coming. I've got one that I have to send it to his work. Yeah. Yeah. I have to. I have to. <laughs> it's but, but yeah, I, and, and I've got to buy more than one, yeah. which, which blows my mind, you know. It's Sorry. What you're making. Is yeah, yeah, well, th this is it, you know, and I forget that. Yeah. I forget that a lot of people look at it in a, in the, the way of, it is a piece of art. And at the end of the day, that's what you're trying to create. You're trying to create a piece that when they look at it, they see something else. They see, they've got a story in their head. They, they've got, they, 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 they think they know what they're like, you know, they're, oh, they did the, they're gentle, they're kind, they're aggressive, whatever. Right. You know, so they, they come up with their own story, if you like. Yeah. So me putting a story out there, I might put a bit of a story out there, but then I think they I think they enjoy that whole creativity in their head. Totally. You know, totally. being able to come up with something themselves. My uh, my favorite thing personally is is when I have somebody who has no idea what I do and I say I, I make action figures and I, I sell stuff and I produce stuff and I do all this stuff with action figures. And they're like, huh, okay. And then they come to the office and they're absolutely yeah. like, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. had no idea this existed. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Candy that, store. You know, a lot of people get, oh, I, I, they, these, I quite like these. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it is amazing. Yeah. And I used to be, I used to be a bit apprehensive, you know, when someone said, oh, what do you do for a living? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, toys. Yes, yeah, I make yeah, toys. Right. Yeah, they're toys. Yeah, yeah. They're definitely toys. And then you totally yeah. have to have to explain, like, these aren't for kids, you know? No, 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 no. Yeah. God, could you imagine giving some of our stuff to kids? No. Uh, yeah. They'd be like, oh, look. Look, we've got all these parts. All these, all these parts. I took the so part. Can you put it back together yeah. for me? Yeah, yeah. Look, I've uh, taken I've undressed it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> That's another hour of your life that they're gonna get back. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. people are very surprised because they, they they haven't seen it, but they also don't know the type of value 
that that is being held, like like the creative process behind making it, or the man hours yeah. go into it, or no. the de- the detail level that that's un- unheard of on anything you've no. seen. No, I mean that that's that 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 that, that is a real. A, it's it's. I don't, I don't get it. I I I very rarely get people saying to me, "Your stuff's too expensive." Why is it so expensive? But it, other people that I know Appreciate that are, are doing, they've been, they've had that, and you know, they've had people say, "Your stuff's too expensive," and like, they don't realise how 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 long you spend yeah. playing with toys. They have no idea. No. They have no idea. You know, I mean, I get in quite a bit of grief because I do. I'm a bit of a workaholic. Yeah. No. And I, I don't just do this. I, I do other, I, this is my job, but I do other things as well. And I do like, I do enjoy working and I will, I will do a 10 hour day or, <laughs> and I will work at a weekend or something, you know, because I, I'm lucky. I, I enjoy what I do. I've always had jobs where that I enjoyed what I do. And I think if you don't enjoy what you do, it's, it's a, Horrible hard life, you know. It really, yeah. hard. really is a hard life. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. But yeah, when you say to someone, "Yeah, what do you do?" and you go, "Oh, yeah, no, I, I make," I say, "I say, I make dirty dollies." That's a great answer. I think when people hear uh, action figure, they yeah. think of what you can buy at yeah, yeah. Target buy Walmart. or Walmart. Yeah. Exactly. They don't realize yeah. the the scale of no. what it is. Yeah. No. Yeah. So then they're less likely to ask to see pictures. Then, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but a lot of people want to see them. <laughs> yeah. And when they do, they're like, wow, these are great. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Well, awesome. One, my, one of my next questions, Mark, what advice do you have for people who are just starting out? Maybe just starting like you did at the beginning, kind of kit bashing, or they want to get into creating yeah. your kind of own custom figures. What advice would you give them? It's very, very simple. And I've said this, because uh, obviously you must get it. You get people asking you questions. They, they ask you, oh, how do you do this? How do you do that? You know, what could, the, you know, where would you, where would you start if you did something like this? What did you use for that? All the time. And I, because of where I started out in this, I always make time to talk to people, mm-hmm. you know, always, because it's so important. Because one conversation, as I said, I used to be a teacher, and I know that one conversation can change a person's life. Totally. And creatively, you know, if you can get one person, and I always say, if I can inspire one person to stop looking and get up and build something. Yeah make something then everything i do is worth it you know because it, it, people don't in my experience people don't have confidence in themselves mm. or their own abilities yeah. so the one thing i say to anybody who's like they go oh you know what body should i buy and it doesn't matter yeah it doesn't matter what you buy it doesn't matter and don't whatever you do don't go out and buy a 3d printer don't go and spend x number of thousand pounds on a camera right. don't buy the best bodies just start buy whatever you can get hold of and start dive right in yeah don't spend hours and hours and hours on 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 youtube looking at how to do stuff right make mistakes get die just get in there make mistakes yep produce something and you go wow that's awesome and the next day you're gonna go that's <laughs> this thing <laughs> what have i done but it doesn't matter. the whole thing is the fact that you need, you've just got to dive in you've got to give it a go yeah. you know you really have i mean the amount of times i've dived in and gone what the hell have i done <laughs> i mean i was some. Um, I, I i used to, i used to do a lot of when i first started it was more star wars stuff yeah mm. And I saw I, I got I made some gonk droids, yeah. uh, bits and pieces, and and then I was like, oh, what else? Yeah, with that, I could make something a bit bigger. And I was like, I'm going to make a land speeder. <laughs> so I made I made a land speeder, and then I was like, I'm going to make another one. So I made like two land speeders, and I started the third one. I was like, what are you doing? Where are you going to put all this stuff? And why are you making three of them? Right. So because you had to make them in threes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you put it really, have you? And then. At the time then, I worked. I worked in in my house, and we. I I converted the loft because I was doing graphic design as well, and I'd convert 
converted that to work up there and it was a massive space. Too much space. Oh, wow. I could build whatever I like. Yeah. It was a <laughs> so, and uh, so I thought I'd have a go at an X-Wing. I thought, right. And I got plans and I, I drew all the plans up, printed it, and I started building the fuselage of an X-Wing. Anyway, I couldn't get it in, and I took it to work to, to, when I was teaching. Yeah. I was like, oh, in the free time, I'll do a little bit there. And it inspires kids, you know, to get stuck in and stuff. Anyway, I took it to work and I couldn't get it in my Land Rover. I was too big. <laughs> and somewhere, I don't know where it is, there's a photograph of me at work and this thing, I've stood it on its end and it's up, it's gone above my head and I'm, I was like, no, I need to stop. Yeah. I, need I need a bigger to... car. <laughs> I, oh, I get a bigger car. Right. Train, right. Right. So, yeah, so I was going to bring, I was, the plan was build the whole damn thing, but I didn't in the end. I just built the cockpit. Yeah. And I see now that there's, there's, and the snow speeder, I bought, I started three snow speeders. Oh, but I see now yes. oh, there, are, there are people that are they're actually doing this now. Yep. And, phenomenal. and of course, because technology has advanced yep. more scale. and you can 3, 3D print stuff, you can scale stuff up so much easier. Yep. Amazing. Some of them are just amazing, really, 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 really talented um, people. And again, they just dived in. Yep. They've just gone in. They've gone for it, you know. And uh, we were talking earlier before before we were recording this about about communities and and how a community really can help. And the wonderful thing about social media, I've always found it very positive. Uh, I, I I used to go on a forum as, as we spoke about earlier. But I used to go on a forum, and it was a we had a lovely community that were very s supportive, you know. And yeah, when I first I couldn't paint, and they looked like they looked hideous when I painted stuff. But people were like, "You've done it. You've given it a go. You tried. Yeah. You put effort. Into you, it. Tried. Yeah. you tried. You tried. Yeah. It looks like a hideous, deformed fish of some sort." <laughs> But you've tried, right. you know? and then right. just you know, as long as as well. The other thing was you've got to have a sense of humour. Oh. oh, you need a sense of humour yeah. because you know. I mean, you've you. I'm sure you guys have had it. You know, you, you've had prototypes back, or you you've done something, and you've just gone, "Oh, that does not. Work. <laughs> <laughs> that really does not. Work. That what were we wrong. thinking? Oh, my God. yeah, yeah. What were we making? What were we thinking? Nobody about? likes it. Yeah. Nobody, no one is going to buy it. No one. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. So just with with that whole thing, just just dive right in and don't be afraid to ask questions of people that are doing stuff. Yes, some of them you might never get, you might never hear from again, but that's fine. You know, everybody's busy. Everybody's busy. Yep. So, but you only need one person to go. Look, look, what you're doing is right. You're just putting your paint on too thick. Yep. And you go, ah, and that's all you need. That's all you need. You just that a little bit of nurturing. A little bit of hope. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and a little bit of hope. Yeah. You know, some of some of the guys I still see on social media, some of the guys that I was on the uh, social freaks with, the forum, mm -hmm. and they're still producing. But the level of their work, and they when we started out, you know, some of them, some of them were dreadful. <laughs> but the le that I'm it worked. Yep. They really worked. So was I, you know. I mean, they. We all we all are at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, you got to persevere, and you got to have, like I said, that sense of humour. And I see some of the stuff that they're doing now, and I'm Amazing. just like, yeah, brilliant, well done. Yeah. Keep and keep going, you know. So yeah, so just dive in, get on with it. That's great advice. And, great advice. Yeah, I think, you, you've got to do it. I think everybody needs to hear that too. My next question: What do you see as the future of this community, this cr these creations that you have, and then how do you hope to continue to contribute to that? And really quickly, I have to go grab my charger or this computer will die. <laughs> I will be right back. <laughs> oh, reality, I love that. Oh, that's funny. So, God, I, th I think that's quite a difficult one. So with the kit bashing, yeah. kit, kit bashing sort of community, I think, I, th I think the whole, what am I trying to say here? You, it goes back to what we were saying earlier on about just sort of diving in mm -hmm. and getting going. And I think, I think there's, a, there's a lot more stuff out there 
that can inspire people to kit bash. I mean, yeah. Yeah. when when we, I mean, you, limitless, you've been in it limitless part. way longer than me, but I mean, you remember fingers used to be like that, yeah. you know, they used to be like that, and the gun was a lump of plastic, or, right? You know, and trousers just were a piece of cloth with, you know, with a tiny <laughs> yeah, a string. string. Yeah. Or a bit of string. And it was a bit of string yeah. that was not to scale or anything. Whereas now, there's so much stuff yeah, out there. So much detail. So much detail. And I, I think that that level of realism that's now available is so inspiring. Yeah. And, you know, we are very fortunate. There are companies like yours that part stuff out. Yeah. Um, so you can pick and choose, you know. You can say, oh, yeah, I like that, and I like that, and I like that. And you can you can build yourself something. Something special. Uh, something special and something that is personal and is unique, yeah. you know. And that's the whole thing about kit bashing. Yeah. Buying, buying a box figure is great. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally used to hate it. <laughs> I used to have a lot of figures, but as soon as that, as soon as I opened it, I'd be like, oh, oh, what do I do with it? Oh, I'd, oh. I'm going to add a bunch of stuff to it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh dear. I mean, I remember, I remember I upset a lot of people a number of years ago. The Akira motorbike. Yeah. Um, the band I won, it was very expensive, a bit yeah. of kit. Very, very expensive and quite hard to get hold of. And I got one. It was damaged. And I got one. And I painted it yellow. Nice. <laughs> and I weathered the hell out of it. And I added loads of greebles to it and stuff. And a lot of people went, that's wow. really cool. But there was a lot of people that went, what have you done? <laughs> what have you done to that? What have you done to that iconic bike? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it, you take your life in your hands when you, when you, when you get a box figure out because yeah. you've got two choices. You either stick it on a shelf right. and dust it now and again, or you say, hmm, I'm going to take that apart and do something with that. And that's, yep. I mean... It's a fabulous jumping off point. So if you're, oh, if you're that, a brand new that, customer right that, to the hobby, I mean, and you yeah. buy yeah, a box a figure, it's a great way to start. Yeah. But yeah. you can always build, build from there. Yeah, I mean, if you th if you if you buy a box figure and you get it out and you're like, that's fantastic. Now what can I add? But <laughs> by kit, you can just add those little bits, and you can take bits away, and you don't feel guilty then about it. And I think, I think that, and again, I I can't speak for everybody, but in my experience, when you get a box figure and you get it out and you go, yeah, great, right. but the sense of achievement the sense of of pleasure that you get exactly what it is adding yeah adding to that and creating something new you know it, it's yours you've created it you know and a lot of people aren't create don't see themselves as creative they don't see themselves but they are they are they just haven't had it nurtured they haven't found a way of, of, of expressing it yeah. So, yeah so the future for me the future of kit Bashing is 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 well, long live parts. Yep. <laughs> you know, bring long live on. parts. Bring... I think it's, yeah, but... it's amazing. I I I think the kit bashing really plays into let, let's just take a, a customer base like a who like video games or comic books, right? And yep. now you can customize your characters. You can pick your weapon. You can pick your backpack. You can pick your hat, and you can do all the those same things with these action figures, which is absolutely yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when when I mean when I think about it, we kit bashed for years. When we're small, when we're little kids. Uh, when I was young, we had a thing in England called uh, Action Man. I think you had GI Joe. Yeah, I just send you, yeah. But of course, Action Man, far superior, far superior. <laughs> but we won't get into that. <laughs> and one of the best things about it was that you just. I mean, he was, you, you could take his clothes off. Yeah. He was naked. And he, and he had a pair of blue pants on, plastic blue pants. But then you could dress him up. Yeah. And there was, for me, when I was a kid, I had some friends that you could go around the house and you used to just rummage through the, through the action man drawer. And you'd be like, this dress up time. And so you would spend hours Yep. Hours, hours, just looking for different bits to kit bash yep. your own toy. Yep. 
And I think that, that, that child in all of us gets lost along the way. And, you know, our creativity of being, being young and, uh, and uh, it, it's, it's, it kind of gets lost and a bit squashed. And because of then we get told that we shouldn't be doing things, you know, <laughs> you, you know, or you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be playing with toys at your age or you, you don't need, it's time you grow out of that. You know, I mean, we've all heard it as kids, you know, oh, you need to stop doing that now. So, so yeah, so yeah, kit, kit bashing, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's long live the parts. Get, get the parts, get the parts, get playing, you know. So Put your box and, up. <laughs> yeah. And for what I, for the way I see my, my role in giving back to the community is really I try and show the process and what I do as much as possible because it's it's so important because people look at stuff and they go i don't i don't know where to start yeah i don't know, yeah. i don't how do you do that yeah. yeah you know and you're like well if you really knew how i weathered stuff you'd be like oh really yeah. <laughs> you know? or it, you know if they really knew how i did some stuff yeah i mean like so this pair of trousers okay so these pair of trousers have been made they, they came, so I had these made. I got really good contact in China, and she is fantastic. And she, I love these trousers. Very hard to find these sort of, uh, sort of military, German military winter trousers. Yeah. So I, I sort of redesigned them slightly, and she had them made. But they came back, they were like cardboard. Yeah. I'm like, what? So, so yesterday, this particular, I was pushing them around the floor with my foot yeah. in my and my work, my work is not clean, not clean. <laughs> you know, it's really not clean. The floor is something. If you drop so, if you drop something on the floor, that's where it's going to stay. Yeah. If you've got a sandwich, you've dropped a bit of food. You're not picking it up. Off What's the floor, a vacuum? <laughs> yeah, yeah, vacuum. No, it's just shoved into a corner. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so, so like weathering stuff, and I've done videos on weathering before, and 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 just not to be precious about stuff, and just you know get 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 on with it. So I hope that that's that's sort of my my input, if you like, into into the community and the fact that if you ask me a question, I damn just do my hardest to you know to try and help someone out. That's amazing. Because you've you've got to give. We're lucky. We're lucky, you know, that we we get to do this all the time. And a lot of people, it's just a little bit of release for them. Yeah. Um, Therapy. You know, they get to escape. Yep. They get to escape. They come home. And they just get to escape. They don't want to watch the television. They don't want to read a book. They want to do something with their hands. And this, this, I think is, I think, right. yeah, it's an expensive hobby, but it doesn't have to be. Right. It doesn't have to be expensive. So, so yeah, that's how I, I, I perceive myself as hopefully giving back a little bit by making myself do videos. I hate doing videos. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Awesome. I'm sure people appreciate those videos uh, that you do that show uh, your process because you know. Well, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. But like I said, I really don't like it. Uh, and then you come to edit it, and like, uh, oh, it's, it's so like, much more work. Hours, right? Hours, <laughs> yeah, hours, so much hours more work. and hours. Oh, yeah. And then you go, oh, damn it, I missed that. I missed the bit. Yeah. And then oh, you man. go back and edit it all. So, but yeah, it's and I need the other thing I need to do is I need to do this live streaming stuff at some stage, just so people see that you know. It yeah. takes hours, <laughs> hours and hours. Yeah, but but yeah, that's that's. I suppose that's what I'd like to do I to help the community, if you like. Love it. Yeah, that's a great goal. So I just have one. We just have one last question before Brian's going to ask you some fun rapid fire questions. Right. Okay. Oh God. Oh uh, no. My last question for you is just: Do you have a favorite project? A favorite figure that you've created? Like, what's the one of your favorite things you've done? Oh God, a favourite thing. I'm sure that's hard to pick. <laughs> Do you know it's it's very very odd, but I I don't like all of my figures <laughs> after I've made them. When I <laughs> when I'm making them, I often I, I I almost fall in love with the the, the act of making a figure yeah. and creating a figure, and it's just and and if people haven't gone out and hit that, right. They need to. Right. That, that's what I'm totally saying. They right. need to. And then you'll understand. <laughs> yeah. But the process of making and creating 
and giving life to a lump of plastic is <laughs> is quite bizarre. Yeah. But it's very very satisfying. Yeah. So I kind of like yeah. I, I, I every figure I make. I love it and love it. And then suddenly I'm just like, yeah, I'm over you now. You want to rework? <laughs> I'm over you. <laughs> but there are some, I suppose there are some. The, there was one, in fact, the one I'm working on now oh. is around Switch, which is, is, is this one, which is an, an earlier version. You, yeah. yeah. So that, that figure is, for, for me, this is a, such a, per, this is a really personal project because... When when I first started, there there were no female action figures about. There were no. There were no. Nobody made heads. Nobody made female heads. There was one company called Kumik who made female heads. Yep. That weren't sort of well known, well known actresses, if you like. They were they were sort of actually these sort of cool generic heads. Nobody made female bodies. Absolutely nobody. And I was just like, but why? Why? And then people started producing. They did start coming out. And then I think Hot Toys put Catwoman out. And we were like, wow. Wow. <laughs> this, this, this is, okay, this, is, this has changed everything. And it did. For me, that changed everything. And I used that head yeah. and that body, that Hot Toys female body, to create this the original one of these which is like ancient yeah and i also then got really really into the whole narrative side of photography and taking because the for me the photography was was very very important yeah part of the process because you you could create a figure but then you by taking a photograph you could create a narrative and right. and bring it to and for, yeah yeah unfortunately now just the way in which particularly social media has gone, the photographs are just, they're scrolled through and they're missed. And there's so many, there's so many beautiful photographs, you know, that, that people have taken up action figures out there that are literally now, they're, they're not absorbed anymore. And they're just, just scrolled up, which is really sad. And it does make me sad, but it's not going to stop me taking them. Yeah. <laughs> and that's great. People to yes. So I think she is probably, for me, one of my one of my sort of favorite pictures because she, figures because she she changed everything for me because she she suddenly I, I suddenly thought wow I can make female figures and I can make strong powerful yeah female figures yep. and then and then came oh I'm gonna get on my soapbox now and I'm gonna run right over time but I have a <laughs> massive issue with the female figures that were being produced. Yep. They were always these rather large, yeah, yeah, vested ladies, and and I was just like, you said biscuits? What's, what's going on? Biscuits. <laughs> these are, but they're not real. These the real people don't look like this. So I was, I got, I got, I got very, very upset. So I used to buy, I used to buy the cumic bodies that they made, and I used to give them some cosmetic surgery to to change the shape yeah, of the body. Yeah. And Make it a little more realistic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that they weren't like out here. Yeah. But they were sort of so and that that was that was a major, major thing for me. And then there's another company, Pop Toys, which is another company. They started producing a female figure of a of a, of a larger chest size. And I was just like, at last. <laughs> Brilliant. I was very, very pleased about that. But I'm still I still get really frustrated because that every figure is white. Yeah. Every they're just white, and particularly female figures. You cannot that you can only buy yep. white female figures, and and I think that's really sad because there's so many cultures that are not being represented in the one six community, and that that does upset me. I mean, I've tried, I've tried dying bodies, oh, man. and it's just not worth. No, <laughs> it doesn't. It's not worth. No. No, it really hasn't. I, I was, I got very excited, and I spent. Well, I died about six bodies, and they're not the cheapest things in the world. No, but I was like, I'm going to give this a go because I, I want to produce a black, yeah, female character, strong, vibrant. Yeah, and it's, it's just, it's just not going to happen because I cannot, I cannot source that, that type of figure, 
And uh, like I said, I dyed them and uh, yeah, they look great. They look great. But some of the plastic dyes darker than yep. the yeah. upper plastics. Yeah. And then within about three months, I was getting lines across the figure where the clothes were. So this, obviously the light is bleaching it out and I couldn't find a, a dye that would hold permanently on silicone and on plastic. So, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's one of my big beefs is that people aren't, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a real narrow culture yeah. that's being right. represented. Once business. they do produce, once a company does produce, uh, say, an AA or black body, they got to make like 10,000, 20,000 units of it. And that's kind of yeah. the big sticking point is yeah, who's going to produce that many. And then you got to, you know, obviously when you do a run like that, like 20,000 units for a body, you got to have... 20 different character head sculpts and yeah i mean it's a whole yeah. process it's 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 it, that's it and because it's it is the same with pop toys yeah. they made that jump all right i think i think hot toys made the pepper pots body yep. and that was a, of a slimmer bit fantastic body yeah 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 really really good and and i think that's that's why pop toys then decided they would do these the the, the different range and i can't fault that company on their bodies the longevity the quality of build they've had issues in the past you know with molds and stuff i know they had a load of issues with molds but the 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 bodies they make and you can that's the other thing you can actually then custom yep. the bodies like i mean like that like this one here this one's been stripped right back i've dremeled parts of the hips out to make it look a bit sort of emaciated and a lot sort of like it's been, you know, she hasn't been fed. So that's the beauty of those particular bodies. Yep. That's why that's why I use them. So yeah, that's awesome. I love it. That was a great, great answer, and I love that you shared your beefs with us. And hopefully, <laughs> yeah, yeah. sorry, conversation <laughs> and some things can start to be different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last thing Brian has some. Rapid fire questions that we're asking all of our artists of the month some fun things to help everybody get to know you a little bit better. And I may have rework okay, these. Okay. <laughs> you might have to edit some of these out. <laughs> if you want us to, we can do it. <laughs> all right. So we're going to do nine questions right now. We've actually erased one. So we're going to do nine for right now. We're going to build this list. So, number one, what is your favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time? Yep. Oh, damn it. I should have thought of this earlier. Oh, you God, we could be here for hours. You didn't know we were going <laughs> to ask it. <laughs> no, I didn't know you were going to ask that. I didn't know you were going to ask that. It's supposed to be Favorite rapid movie. fire. What comes to your head? Oh, God. I, d I don't know. I d oh, I know. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. Pay it Changed forward. my life. Number two. What is your favorite holiday? Go. Favorite holiday? Oh, any holiday. Any, I love cooking. I love cooking. Christmas, Christmas. I love Christmas because I just get to cook loads of food and feed loads of people. Love it. The best. I love it. Yeah. Number three, what did you want to be when you grew up, when you were little? What oh. did you want to be when you were... Oh, what did I want to be? I wanted to be a dustman. That's what you call garbage man. Oh. I just thought they had a really cool... Yeah, just get walk around cool all day. Time, right? That'd be really cool. Yeah. And uh, I remember the answer was, uh, we don't care, son, as long as you're happy. You so, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't want to be a mo man who makes models. That's what she <laughs> thought. <laughs> All right. So number four, and this kind of yep. ties off that. What job would you never want to do? Oh, God. I, it's, anything that involves serving the public <laughs> that's a tough one <laughs> that's a tough one anything that, because i've worked i've worked in the public sector before in retail and uh, there are some lovely people out there, there but my god they're so nutters <laughs> <laughs> they're just yeah and they can be very unpleasant and i think anybody who works in retail or in a in a shop or in anything like that hats off to them oh. because you have put up with a lot of oh yeah the, yeah. All right. Xbox or PlayStation? Oh, d d Xbox. Oh, did I say Xbox? <laughs> PlayStation. What am I on about? I can't play. Pl I can't play games anymore. 
I've got an addictive personality. I remember sitting up at <laughs> two o'clock in the afternoon looking out the window on a sunny day going, I've got to get off of this Star Wars game. Yeah. It's not right. <laughs> it's not healthy. No, I, don't, I don't play them anymore. Don't I can't play anymore. Okay. No, unhealthy for me. That's a good answer, too. Go All right. Number, the next one. Let's just call it that. <laughs> if you were a menu item in a restaurant, what would your name be? Oh, God. I won't make you sick. <laughs> Perfect. That's a good one. Perfect. All right. Well, I might do. That should be in brackets. I'll just call my Next question. What is your favorite curse word? Oh, I can't say that. <laughs> what do you say when you mess something up? Oh, I can't say that either. <laughs> well, call it. Lummy. I say call Lummy a lot. There you go. Call Lummy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I can't say the curse word. No. All right. Definitely not. And the last one. Do you have a zombie apocalypse escape plan? Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay. I, I, Finished. I'm not telling you, though. No, I do. I just get bitten. First, I can't be. I mean, I love zombie films. I love them all. I love a Resident Evil. But oh god, how tired would you be? So tired. God, be hungry all the time. So There'd be no toilet roll. Oh no, man, no, get get me out. I'll be first. They'd be like, Quick, get the old guy. Get me get me, get the old guy. Yeah, leave him there. Yeah. So yeah, my plan is to stand very still and hope they don't see me. Perfect. That'll work, man. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. I think this is a fantastic, fantastic interview. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'll be, I'll be honest, I've been sick to my stomach all day worrying about it. Oh, that. no! <laughs> As it should be. Yeah, honestly, ah. <laughs> honestly, I'm dreadful. I'm dread it's the same. If I put one of my dollies, uh, one of my figures up, so it goes up on a, on a Tuesday, I don't sleep. Uh, <laughs> ah. Yeah. And, and and I feel sick all that morning. I'm pacing around. I'm like, come on, put it, just put it up, put it up. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a, it, I love my job and I also hate it as well yeah. because that side, yeah. that side of it. Yes, yeah. there is. Yeah. There's a different side than, than, than what's shown for sure. Yeah, 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 definitely. Well, definitely. you know what? You did great. This did was an awesome good. interview. You did real good. I, oh, I think thanks, your guys. nerves didn't come across, so yeah. you did awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I didn't chat too much. No, you did good. Yeah, if this if this comes out and it's like five minutes long, <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, they said all yeah. those nice things about it. What they meant? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Just a quick second. Yeah, 30 seconds. That's it. Here, meet Mark. That was him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, this is wonderful. We had a good time. Good, good time. Good. I, I, I really hope, like, I really, I really hope that you really go for this and that it works and you get people on board doing this because a lot of guys will just go oh, I'm not doing that you know so I really do hope that this this sort of series and that your new website really really goes I think it's going to be amazing and I think it's bringing going to really bring in people and and bring people into this industry and into this the really artistic side of it and and just the fun Indeed, indeed. And if there's anything I could do to help in the future, you know, just just ask. And if I if, if I can, I will. Um, That'd be awesome. Definitely. Thanks for listening. If you like this episode, please share the show. Share it on your social media and share it with your friends. We don't really care how you share it. Just share the show. Until next time. <laughs>